Some people say that flying first class is the best experience anybody can have, while others say it's definitely the most comforting experience you can have on an airplane 35,000 feet above the ground. And so when we think about robots in the sky, most often it's probably recalling some sci-fi anime manga or film. But actually, in fact, that notion of robots in the sky being related to anything sci-fi or paranormal or superhuman is kind of outdated. Because living in the year 2023 with supersonic boom jets that are able to fly from Vancouver to Sydney in less than 5 hours and giant airliners like the Airbus A380 which even has a shower on board a commercial airline for first class passengers then the idea of humanoid robots on a commercial airplane shouldn't be so far off. In fact Huge aviation groups like the Airbus Group have teamed up with Robotics Laboratory to launch a new joint research program that aims to develop humanoid robots that will be used for aviation manufacturing. The project is called Cominoid, which stands for Multi-Contact Collaborative Humanoids. By combining Japanese expertise in hardware and robotics, along with advanced French knowledge of mathematics and algorithms, the joint venture encourages initial progress in fields such as robot design and haptics, as well as tactile perception and continuous KDAR. The team spoke and said building on these achievements would develop multi-contact locomotion, which enables humanoid robots to move using not just their feet, but also other body parts such as elbows, knees, and hands as a human would when crawling. A new breed of humanoid robots. While in South Korea, a company called Case have gone beyond the research of developing unmanned aircrafts to testing humanoid robots designed to operate a regular aircraft by sitting in the pilot's seat and using controls just like a human would. But all of this is just boring, to be honest. What if we could have humanoid human-like female robots with giant boobs be our flight attendants or have personal companion robots in first class. But if so, then you would probably want to exercise some caution around the private onboard shower on the Airbus A380. Otherwise, you could maybe find yourself being electrocuted on an airplane. Probably not the steamy electrical scenario you were hoping for. Because they're robots, right? Brain time. Congratulations, you made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck and all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now back to the video. So in case you guys didn't know, Every five years, the world hosts a World Expo. And it just so happens the next one happens to be in the year 2025, which also happens to be held in Osaka, Japan. The same very hometown as probably one of the most famous female human-like robots, which is Erica, and her creator, Professor the Mad Scientist, Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro and I'm super excited to share this with you guys because I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to visit Japan in 2025. So the World Expo is an event that usually takes place for six months out of the whole year. In 2020 it was held in Dubai. In 2030 it's scheduled to be in Busan, South Korea but in 2025 the expo is going to be in Osaka, Japan. Anyways, check out some of the footage that I found about 2025. Anyways, check this you out. met me on the street. Would I startle you? Would you greet me just like any other person? 
The relationship between robotics and the human body is closer than you might think. In the not so distant future, even robots like me might be a part of everyday life. When I was seven years old, I visited Expo 70 Osaka. Many of the technologies on display there seem improbable, but today, nearly 50 years later, they are commonplace. My name is Hiroshi Ishiguro. I'm a roboticist. At my pavilion at Expo 2025, Osaka, Kansai, Japan, I will explore how humanity will evolve through technology. What will the world be like in 50 years? We need only imagine. We humans, we've come a long way to get where we are today. Looking back, it's hard to believe what we have achieved. What drives us forward? What spurs us on? It's our insatiable need to learn and know, to do and grow, to twiddle and tweak and 2.0. We humans, we're never done. We've made monuments and cut through continents, mastered human flights, sent up satellites, walked in outer space, created user interface, built cities on sand, turned sea into land, and still, we're not done. We made levitating trains and open world games, constructed super towers and grids for solar power, made houses smart, turned food into art, built self-driving cars and taught bots to play guitars. But no, we're not done. We found cures for disease, performed symphonies, probed the ocean floors, made machines do our chores, deconstructed quarks, studied great white sharks, sequenced our genomes and even 3D printed homes. Are we done yet? Oh no, we're not done. In fact, we need to do even more than ever before. Our planet is in need of help. There are challenges we can't ignore. But remember, we are humankind. No job's too big if we set our minds. If we all embrace the spirit that there really is no limit. If we rise to this occasion and come together across nations. If we integrate and ideate. We...